that's very good. So yeah, uh, I know that you wrote a blog post on some neuropathic problems that you had, like ants crawling over you or your toes, <laughs> toes burning. So uh, can you share us with, uh, some of the things? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, that was, I, I try to I try to keep a little sense of humor about you know some of those things. That's another thing I've I've learned incredibly from the the online community has is that coping mechanism of, of keeping laughing and, and keeping a sense of humor has been just incredibly um, weightlifting off of my, uh, you know, uh, dealing with it, um, especially for so long. Um, so it, it, it helps to, to try to laugh and take some, have a little perspective on things. But, um, you know, especially when you have complications, it's, you know, just, you know, some of those initial things, it's tough. Um, you know, I, I've got uh, beginning of neuropathy, mostly in my in my feet and my toes. So I have kind of the the burning sensation sometimes and the tingling, um, and uh, so you know it's it's something I'm, I've had it for a number of years. And I, I think back to my early to mid twenties, maybe somewhere around like 22, 23 is somewhere when I first started getting those initial signs of it, and it first kind of came into my world. Um, and I was on I, at that point, I had some shooting pains. Um, Pretty often, so I was on uh, I was on a, 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 um, a, neuro, a neuropathy drug at that point, and uh, you know, and that helped. I took it maybe once or twice a day, depending on the severity, and uh, and that helped. But getting things under control, my sugars under control, and being more accountable to myself really helped uh, get that under control a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, you know, aside from neuropathy, it's uh, you know I've got a little bit of uh, retinopathy too, so. That's just, I think, of the, the same thing. I don't have any visible, uh, I can't say it's impacting my life, you know, one way or the other, um, but I, I know it's there. I uh, just had an eye exam yesterday, actually, and uh, so we had a little discussion about all of that and where I am as far as bee management and how that's mm -hmm. playing into the eyes and, and all that. So uh, you also just passed a decade of using insulin pump. I so, did. So, uh, question is, what's your first experience with it? Is it, do you like it or you don't? Or tell us some of the pros and cons of using it. Of using my insulin pump? Yeah. Um, I love it. I mean, it, it, it's outstanding. It's great. It's, uh, it gives you a, a level of, and I, I, I hate using the word control, but it gives you a level of control and management, uh, just being tighter in what you're doing. Um, and, I, I wouldn't sacrifice it for anything, um, but having said that, there's definitely. I mean, it's a it's a it's a piece of technology. It's a device that's attached to you all the time. Um, so you know, there are there are cons to it. Um, I took a break actually uh, last year for um, about maybe five or six months just because um, I'm not the most FDA compliant uh, person in the world. So I tend to leave my sites in longer um, than they should be. Um, so I, I got to a point where I have a lot of scar tissue on my stomach and my abdomen um, and even my legs uh, when I use those. So I try to rotate a little more often than I, I typically do. Um, but it just got to the point where I was tired of, I dreaded the moment when I had to change my set. And I, I would sit at the table, the kitchen table, and just not want to do it. Sit there with it and look at it and say, I really wish I, I could just leave it in um, or just not do this. Um, and it, it just became a little of an emotional burden for me, and I, I wanted to take a break. I wanted to give my body a chance to heal just a little bit, um, you know, let some of that scar tissue go away somewhat. Um, and so I did. I stepped away from it, and um, I think it was a pretty incredible experience. I actually improved my A1C by a whole percentage point, um, you know, while I was on that break. Um, and uh, it reinforces my endo always says it's, it's not the uh, technology or the device, it's the person. And uh, I, I think she's she's uh, head on with that one. Um, mm -hmm. So, but again, it's something I really I really wanted to go back to, and I'm very glad I did um, after that that five month hiatus, just because mm -hmm. it's um, you know like you said, it gives you that level of control. Might make you a little little lack some time, and make you um, that flexibility may may give you a little more freedom um, than you uh, than you know what to do with. But uh, but I love it. So but you love it. It's already. It's always convenient for you. So uh, here, the qu next question is: uh, You have been diabetic from '84 and almost like now it's 2011, 27 years. So, what is the cultural shift you saw in your whole, you know, 
diabetes life or from 84 to 2011? Um, I think the, the biggest thing has been, I think just the, the, the openness about, um, the, I mean, the, the, the community itself. I mean, people are more, more open with their diabetes now than, than I ever remember. And maybe it was just a simple matter of me not paying attention. Um, I, I didn't go to camp a whole lot when I was young. I went um, that, that first summer after I was diagnosed and then uh, once when I was a teenager. Um, and I didn't have the greatest experience with it just because I was never a camper when I was a young kid. And um, so I didn't, I didn't grow up knowing a whole lot of other diabetics. And it was just something I always just managed on my own. My, you know, I had my mom, you know, where I could ask questions, but, you know, it's your mom. Who wants to ask your mom or your dad, you know, the, the, those questions uh, when you're, especially when you're a teenager, um, you know, it's, who, how do they understand? How could they possibly know what I'm going through? Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but I think, you know, just growing up and then, in, you know, into the, my 20s and then over the past decade, just seeing the explosion of, you know, the Internet and the online community, um, you know, just seeing all the number of blogs and, and, and uh, awareness that is out there. Um, you know, there, obviously there's still a lot of uh, misconceptions, um, and, and most people still don't know and understand some of the basics, but the point is that conversation is at least happening, where I didn't see it happening a whole lot, you know, when I was younger. So I think that's been, uh, the biggest thing. I mean, obviously the, technology has changed. Um, the, op the advancement of Internet and the openness. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, but I mean, even in technology, I mean, even just, you know, the devices and the, you know, the tools that we have, you know, blood meters, <laughs> which blood meters and insulin pumps and CGMs and, and all of that good stuff um, may not be as accurate as they should be, uh, which I won't get into, but, uh, you know, it's definitely better off than, than where we were as far as having these tools to use. Exactly. Um, now we just so, want to make... So uh, you went to this uh, Lilly Diabetes Center in uh, Indiana with your mom a yeah. uh, few months back. So uh, what did you learn from, I think they have this whole 75 years of history uh, from then until 2011. So what are some of the things that you observed? What are some of the things that you learned uh, from this tour? Um, you know, I think more than anything, it was just the the reaction of, and I say reaction, no pun intended. It was the response of my mom, you know, just being inside the place that has that has been responsible for keeping her alive, you know, for all of those years, um, and just kind of being a part of that experience with her. I I had actually been to Lily, um, and I've been down here in Indy for uh, about seven years, so I've been in there once or twice before. Um, but, uh, you know, that was her first experience in there and just being able to be in there and, and see that, that historical component of where things were and how they started to how they evolved and where we are. Um, they've got a lot of um, uh, historical uh, artifacts and, and tidbits sitting around in some of the cases. And just to kind of, you know, be off in the background as she went around with my dad and, and with the, the Lily uh, representative who was with us giving us the tour, um, just to see her go through some of these old school, you know, syringes and and, uh, and diabetes things that she used when she was a kid, um, and just kind of seeing that that twinkle in her eye, and it, it was a pretty cool experience, um, you know. And it was, uh, I think that was the biggest thing. I mean, I, I can't say I really learned anything, um, you know, new. But you should experience that, uh, you know, uh, that kind of thing because you actually know what your elders, what your mother, what your father have undergone and what sophisticated objects that we have today. Uh, how grateful are we uh, to have all this sophisticated stuff today? Exactly. I mean, it's, a, it's that historical aspect of it. I mean, I, I'm a history buff, so I love, I love everything related to history. Um, so I, you know, I think that is just, you know, really cool. Seeing, you know, the initial, they've got a, outside of their main building, they've got this, um, this old, the, the original lab. Um, mm -hmm. where, uh, where Eli Lilly worked um, and where some of the insulin was first produced. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, just being able to walk up into that building and, you know, walk upstairs and see some of it was just, was pretty incredible. And, um, you know, and then seeing they've got this big uh, wall outside um, with, uh, you know, a handful of names, uh, those who've lived with 
with uh, lived on insulin for 75 years, mm -hmm. um, and that was that was pretty cool. Um, you know, standing out there with my mom, and we couldn't take pictures. Uh, Lily was a little stringent on that, but uh, you know, we were we were just pretty impressed that you know together the both of us have 75 years um, on insulin. Mm -hmm. I, I think every diabetes uh, person who is on insulin should take that tour. Uh, so the next question is, uh, some of the things you learned hard way in this 27 years? <laughs> Probably the, the, the biggest thing was that uh, my mom, my parents uh, were right. Um, pretty much everything they were telling me when I was young about needing to manage and, and, and test, you know, and, and do all of that. Um, test, don't guess, as, as D-Life says. Um, they, they were pretty much right. Um, they, they gave me the, the flexibility and the freedom um, when I became a teenager to, to learn the ropes myself. Um, they, they taught me the best they could and let me do it on my own. And I rebelled when I was a teenager quite a bit um, and really just ignored diabetes for a long time. Um, I had some scary high A1Cs. Um, so I think just learning, um, dealing with that and, and coming out on the other side of it um, you know, I think that was one of the biggest learning experiences that I've had from, you know, from my parents at least, is that, you know, when they said some of these things when I was, you know, 12 and 13, and, and even 14 and 15, they, they knew what they were talking about. My mom knew because she had gone through some of those same things. Um, and, uh, you know, and I think that was all before, you know, again, it was just my mom and I. So for her talking about some of these things, and some of these things she didn't talk about because she was... She just didn't care to, to get into those. Um, I think just finding that support of others who are like us is huge. And I think maybe when I was a teenager, if I had some way to connect with people the way we have now, um, you know, would have been, you know, a life changing thing. Maybe I wouldn't have rebelled, um, you know, in my teens and in my early twenties, um, up through college. Mm -hmm. So I think, again, it's just that it's learning that you need that support and that ability to cope with it, even if you don't think you do. Uh, if you think you know it all and you've, you've done this and you've done that, um, doesn't mean you know anything. Uh -huh. Exactly. And your final message to the diabetic community? Um, I, I think it's that uh, we're all in this together. Um, you know, We've all got a pretty powerful voice, and it's, uh, it's important to use it. Um, it's important to use it in whatever ways we want to and whatever ways we're good at. Um, and that, if that means writing a blog or just hanging out on Twitter or writing letters to the editor or, um, you know, just being a part of a local D camp, um, I think it's, it's important to just connect with others and, uh, know that you're not alone in this. Um, and that, that makes all the difference, I think, personally and then to, to other people who may need that same kind of support. That Thank would you, be, Mike. Be my message. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show and sharing your experiences. Thank you, you so say, much. Thanks for doing, BJ. This is awesome. Thank hey, you. guys. Oh, everyone listening to this show, please go through today's diabetes recipe, diabetes tip, and diabetes exercise. And you guys have a nice day. Please leave your comments to make this better. Thank you so much. And you have a nice day, Mike. You too. Thanks a lot.